My name is Steve Lacey. I run track. I play guitar. I act. I model. And I am famous fit. Before becoming an American musician known for pumping out some truly psychedelic pop songs, Steve Lacey was born on May 23rd, 1998 in Southern Los Angeles County to an African-American mother and a Filipino father. Taking part in a largely middle-class upbringing, Steve attended private school during his early years and was shielded from the rougher parts of Compton by his mother, who regularly encouraged him and his three sisters to stay inside as often as possible. Now, for the most part, Steve's father was absent from his childhood and would tragically pass away when his son was only 10 years old. Following this, Steve would largely lose his connection to the Filipino side of his heritage, which left him with a natural curiosity about the culture that he hopes to one day explore in greater depth. I didn't know Steve Lacey was Filipino. This is great. Around the same time that he lost his father, Lacey discovered his life's passion, music. More specifically, he discovered guitar while playing the video game Guitar Hero. And this is what keeps me sane. It's one of my favorite colors. It looks very old and it has like 65 hardware. I'm nerding out right now, I'm sorry. From there, he'd move on to playing in school bands that helped him develop his skill set and made him feel like he fit in for the very first time. He told The Guardian, the band made me feel like a person. When I look back at my childhood, I think of being out of place. I never felt like a normal girl. Speaking of school, during his time in Washington Prep High School is when Steve realized that he was attracted to other boys as well. Describing himself as a floater who had a small handful of friends but never a clique of his own, Steve's attempt to make meaningful connections with others was complicated by the social climate of others around him. Continuing his conversation with The Guardian, he explained, As a kid, I just thought it would be a fantasy. I kiss a boy? It was just so out of the way of anything I could obtain. It sounds crazy, electrifying, but that could ever happen to me. When he later came to the realization that he was into girls as well, it confused him all the more. Today, Steve is proudly bisexual, but it was wrestling with these complicated emotions during his childhood that taught him the importance of controlling his own narrative. Even back then, Steve never took part in anything that could potentially lead to a label. For instance, he loved to dance, but he didn't want anyone to assume that he was gay. So he hid his passion from others. Okay, am I gonna be a music nerd? Or am I gonna try to be cool and like fit in, you know? Or do I wanna play sports? Cause that's what's notable. In fact, a lot of people around him didn't even know that he could sing until after he began releasing music because he didn't want members of his extended family to make a big deal out of it. Then at the age of just 15, Steve saw a friend at school named Jamil Bruner making a beat on his laptop. Seeing that he was intrigued by the process, Jamil would invite Lacey to start playing with his Neo Soul group, the internet, loosely affiliated with the Odd Future Collective. By the time Lacey joined their ranks in 2013, the internet had already gained popularity for their unique brand of R&B soul, off the back of two studio albums and were hard at work on their third. It was after Ego Death, and that was the first piece of music I ever worked on. It was really? Ego Death? Yeah. Wow, that's a pretty and classic was, thing to work on for your first dance. I know, I was 16. Wow. Lacey was still only a teenager at this point in time, which meant that his age prevented from his participation at certain venues that the internet would frequent, but that never stopped him from helping contribute to the recording of Ego Death, which was then nominated at the 2016 Grammy Awards for Best Urban Contemporary Album. Now that he was earning some incredible practical experience, Lacey started making his own beats and would pitch them via email or DM to rappers he admired, like Isaiah Rashad, Gold Link, and Denzel Curry. And as hard as it may be to believe for a 16-year-old who had already earned a Grammy nomination, best was still yet to come. Around the age of 17, another one of Lacey's collaborators, Ezra Koning of Vampire Weekend, put him in touch with the producer, DJ Day, who then became his mentor. Thanks to that relationship, Lacey wound up with a placement on Kendrick Lamar's fourth album, Damn. When meeting Kendrick for the very first time, Lacey came prepared with a laptop in one hand and a guitar in the other ready for whatever may happen. After Kendrick gave him a taste of what he was working on, Lacey showed Kendrick a little bit of his own production, playing a demo that he had made on his laptop, featuring vocals that he had recorded with his own iPhone. Kendrick loved it. He loved it so much that he wound up using it in his track, Pride. First time that Lacey heard his song on Kendrick's album, he was so happy that he cried but his upward trajectory would only continue from there. The day after he graduated from high school, he immersed himself in the music industry. Shortly thereafter, he would release his debut solo project, a series of songs packaged with the very literal title, Steve Lacey's Demo. Since joining the internet, Steve had worked alongside artists like Solange, Tyler the Creator, Kendrick, and J. Cole. But now he was finally ready to show the world that he was just as talented. Two years after the release of his demo, he dropped his debut album, Apollo 21. This project would earn Lacey yet another Grammy nomination, 
but that old issue that he had with perception would once again creep in. While speaking to the Guardian, he explained why. The thing I hated as a kid was being perceived. You saying what I am and fame would only make that worse. Success was very scary because I thought I would lose control of myself, my ideas. Thankfully, therapy helped him to recognize that he was placing his artistry on a pedestal. Then in 2020, his life changed once again, forever. It happened one night while he was driving through a canyon in the mountains near his home in Los Angeles, California, on a road with just enough space for one other vehicle. That's when another car hit him directly head on. He described this terrifying moment to another magazine. I remember a backflash. I thought I'd die. It scared the shit out of me. After several moments, Steve opened his eyes and looked down at his body, only to find that he was still in one piece. He got out of his car, worried that it might explode and somehow managed to survive the entire ordeal with little more than a few cuts on his hands. While he may have walked away relatively unharmed, Steve says that this event had a profound impact on his life made him realize that the idea of death defines the meaning of most people's lives. Having now come so close to experiencing his own, Steve's perspective shift and everything felt lighter afterwards. It also inspired him to get to work on his sophomore release. While Steve was hard at work on his follow-up album, Gemini writes, he broke up with his boyfriend of seven months, and this wound up informing much of the music that made its way onto the album including one of the biggest hits of the project, his hit single, Bad Habits. This groovy yet melancholy track is a chock full of yearnings and regret, and it would turn into Steve Lacey's breakthrough hit by blowing up across social media, and TikTok especially. This wasn't the first track of Lacey's to go viral on the platform. That honor belongs to a single, Dark Red, off of his original demo. Of course, that song didn't blow up immediately. Instead, it sporadically came to life in the summer of 2021, when it wound up being used in over 100,000 TikToks. Upon getting the TikTok boost, Dark Red would go on to be streamed over 600 million times on Spotify alone, and set the table for Bad Habit to become just as popular on social media, with the hook to Steve's newer song having been used over half a million times already. In fact, the sped up version also proved to be so popular that Lacey released it as a standalone song. By August of 2022, Bad Habit had become a crossover hit on the radio, and a staple of the top 10, eventually claiming the top spot on the Billboard charts once the clamor for Harry Styles as it was finally calmed down. The popularity of Bad Habit would even go so far as to boost the metrics for Lacey's other music as well. Dark Red is now in the top 20 of Spotify's USA chart of the most played songs, while also being featured on Billboard's Hot 100 for the very first time peaking at the number 78 spot. And right below that is Static, which is another single off of Gemini Rights. And sure, over the more recent weeks, he's hit a couple of speed bumps in the form of live performances that didn't go all that smoothly. First, there was a poorly executed concert in the John Kane Arena in Melbourne. And this show left some of Steve's fans traumatized after they experienced a stampede to get inside the venue. A strange line snaking around the oval gives way to a crush of concert goers. There was like no way out. Like you would look up and you just got instantly like crushed. Lacey would attempt to manage the crowd himself during the performance, stopping things several times to make sure that people were safe and that the audience wasn't in danger. An ambulance would later be called to the scene, but no injuries were ever reported. And then there was his very public outburst on stage in New Orleans, where he broke a fan's smartphone after being pelted with a disposable camera. Lacey would later admit that he probably could have handled that moment a little bit more tactfully, but he refused to apologize for what had happened. And really, it's kind of hard to blame the guy. No one should be throwing anything at performers while they're in the middle of a set. All in all, those are two events that are likely to be lost in the annals of time as Steve Lacey moves forward with his career. But as for where he goes from here and how far he can take things, well, we're going to have to wait and see. I mean, after all, this has been before they were famous. Thank you so much for watching today's episode, everybody. And before you head out, please just answer this one question. If you were nominated for a Grammy at only 16 years old. Would you want everybody at school to know about it? Or would you keep it to yourself? Let me know what you do in the comment section down below. Otherwise, don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on your notifications to make sure that you never miss a new episode. And if you'd like to learn more about the come-ups of a few other celebrities, then be sure to search for our recent looks into the past of individuals like Lola Brooke, Bandman Rill, and Booba Savage. My name is Clyde Smith, and I'll see you guys in another video. Now, I'm not gonna lie, Steve Lacey is not the only biracial kid that knows everything that he knows about guitars and rock music from Guitar Hero, so like, I kind of feel like Guitar Hero was like one of those things that bridged a gap between like young urban kids and rock and roll and all those types of different cultures and music. So like, I often think like, if it wasn't for Guitar Hero, we definitely wouldn't have Steve Lacey. And there's probably a whole ton of different other musicians that gained or was put on game from Guitar Hero, pun intended. Yeah, that was good. Anyways.
back to the script.